Hi folks, Philip here, CNN Cleaning, Manning, South Carolina. Today I'm going to be doing some work on the Vortex. I'm going to do a simple job uh, that everybody that owns these trucks should know how to do. Uh, some basic instructions in case you haven't done it before. Today we're going to change the fuel filter. Uh, this, this truck's got a two-part fuel filter, a fuel filter on the top, water separator on the bottom. And every uh, couple days you need to drain that out, let the water out of the separator. But over time, you'll see the light uh, comes on more and more. I try to change my fuel filter at every oil change or about every oil change. Uh, but if you start to see that light more often, just go ahead and change it. I always keep one in stock. I get them from Rock Auto. I like to use the Wix filters. I'll post that uh, that number, part number and description in the, in the comments below. Uh, but let's get started and I'll show you how to walk through this real easy. Alright, so now we're up under the UD on the passenger side, directly behind the fuel tank. There's two wires coming from the water separator. You want to unplug them at the connector. There's a little thumb clip. Once you have them unplugged, just kind of tuck them out of the way and open up the drain. I'm going to let that completely drain. As you can see, i got an old drain pan on the ground. While that's draining, let's cover a few things you'll need to have. So i got a Wix filter here, number 33788. I'll put a link in the description. You could get these from Amazon, uh, wherever you buy your filters. Inside you have the fuel filter, of course. And you should have a new o-ring in order to change this out I'd, I like to use this ginormous pair of channel locks I picked these up at a tractor supply they work well you can use an old filter wrench and then a slightly smaller ginormous pair of channel locks so those are the tools I'm going to use to pull this off uh, you can also get the one-piece filters and water separators that are connected at the bottom you have to run a little tap to put the two sensors in. I wouldn't recommend it. I would stick with the Wix two-part filter. It's way, uh, way better and, and they're not that expensive. I think I paid 10 or $12 for these. Uh, so we're still draining but I'll give that just a minute and we'll be right back. So as you can see we're uh, just about dried out. The drain has stopped. So I'm going to get ready to drop this filter. I always like to close the drain once it stops, just so I don't get any on me. And we're going to get our giant pair of channel locks or your old filter wrench, whatever you might have. And just twist that off. It should be, once you get it started, it should unthread fairly easily. Pour the remaining fuel in the pan so you don't make a mess. When it stops dripping, you can just pull the pan out and we'll get to change in the bottom half. All right, with the filter off, we're just going to spin off the uh, water separator. That shouldn't be super tight. That's what the inside of the water separator looks like. And this ring is what senses the water level and tells you you need to drain it. 
So now we got our new filter. We got our water separator. I'm going to drop the new gasket in that water separator. I'm kind of like an oil filter. I like to get a little bit of the fuel and just lube that gasket up a little before threading it on. Make sure, I'm trying to make sure the threads are straight before threading it on tight. And now we're ready now to go back on the truck. Top gasket, I make sure it's seated. And I like to do the same thing with it, move it up a little. And before I spin it on, I'm going to switch the camera around, but before I spin it on, I'm going to fill this filter up with fuel, as full as I can get it without making a mess. So I'll be right back after I fill this up. So now we got our filter full of fuel. We're back under the truck to spin it in place. There. Much like an old filter, you don't want to go too tight. Plug in our sensors. And it will only plug in one plug. And then above your filter is this priming bulb. You just want to pump that a few times, you'll kind of feel it get hard. And that's going to just make sure that that fuel is topped off. All right, our fuel filter is installed. You want to crank the truck up and you're likely going to have an air pocket in the fuel line. So what I like to do is crank it and immediately cut my rev up. And sometimes it'll stay running, sometimes it'll die one time. That's my, all right, my coolant level sensor's going, of course, as it always is. And once it dies the first time, I like to go prime it a few more pushes of the button. And you might get a hard start, but it will crank. And then crank your rev up again. Just let it run five minutes, ten minutes or so, and you'll be good to go. So that's changing the filter. This is a 2007 UD. They're all very similar. I'll put a link in the description to buy the filter. You should be doing this roughly every oil change or any time you see the light uh, more often than every few days. You should be draining it. Uh, the manual says every day. I do it maybe once every three or four days. So if you see that light a lot, go ahead and put a fuel filter on. If you wait too long, uh, you'll notice your top speed drop and you'll notice your temperature run hotter. Uh, and that's when you've waited too long and you really need to get a fuel filter put on. Uh, so that's your quick, VD, uh, quick Vortex tip of the day. If you're driving one of the UD machines on how to change your fuel filter.